We made a ton of mistakes in our first year doing parking lot striping and in today's video I want to share with you guys the five biggest mistakes that we made so that way you can avoid them in your business and I'm going to save the biggest mistake for last because that's the one that almost ended up costing us $4,000. But we're giving away two MacBooks in March to a couple of Quote IQ Premium or Platinum subscribers so if you need help keeping up with customers sending estimates, invoices, and collecting payments check out Quote IQ linked in the comment section and the description of this video. Also if you want to see how I'm landing a lot of these parking lot striping jobs check out the local domination course in it you're going to get my face Facebook ad strategy as well as Aaron's web content strategy that's going to give you the blueprint for driving free leads into your business month after month. That'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. But the first mistake that we noticed pretty early on was paint clogs and unfortunately there isn't a lot that we can do with this one. It's not even necessarily a mistake. It just looks like you made a mistake to the customer whenever it happens. So I'm not sure if this is because of the thickness of the paint or because of the tip but from time to time paint will get clogged in the tip and then it'll mess up the spray pattern and it'll look pretty crazy. When when this happens we just adjust the nozzle to clear the clog and then we overlap where we left off it's not a big deal but it's something that happens uh, from time to time and it doesn't look the best so i just wanted you guys to be aware of it because when it does happen it's annoying and it's just something that you have to try to make look as best as you possibly can now the next mistake is something that can happen whenever you paint anything as you probably know if you've painted anything before it's very easy to create a mess uh, if the paint starts to dripping or if the paint spills because very quickly it gets on everything that it shouldn't so we're extremely careful when we're pouring the paint to try to get everything into the bucket and we're aware of any little spills that are coming off of it. This is why every time we pour paint, we do it over a grassy area. We had a couple of situations where we spilled paint everywhere and because we did it over a grassy area, it ended up being all right because grass grows and concrete shows. That's a little bit of a bar for you guys. Comment down below bar uh, if you guys like that one. This next mistake has happened to us a couple times, but when it does happen, it makes you feel really dumb and that is walking through wet lines the worst time this has happened was on a night job that we did one of the people that we work with walked right through a wet arrow and you could see probably about two or three prints outside of the arrow of his foot uh, so the best thing that you can do whenever this does happen is try to clean it up as quickly as possible because the longer that you let it sit the less likely it is that you're really going to be able to do anything about it now the worst part of this problem is having to explain it to the owner after the fact we got lucky on the job where he walked through it because the owner thought a drunk guy had walked through the parking lot after we had striped it and he was joking with us about it until we told him that we were the ones who actually did it this next mistake is more of a beginner mistake and that is trying to move too quickly and get too much done too fast i've noticed that this issue gets worse whenever we start to get tired because towards the end of some of our bigger jobs we aren't taping as much as we were in the beginning of the job or we start freehanding things a little more than we probably should and these types of things typically lead to more mistakes now this may be an experience issue i'm sure as we continue to learn and get better with the way that we stripe and get better equipment we also will learn faster ways to get the job done but in the beginning i would focus on quality over speed because the end result is the only thing that ultimately matters to your customer and it's the deciding factor if you're going to get a call back next time so i would take my time rather than trying to get the job done too quickly the last mistake i want to touch on is the one that almost cost us four thousand dollars and that is to never let wet lines get wet this will cause them to run and they're going to look terrible i know what you guys are probably thinking duh justin of course we know this already but when when you're trying to fit jobs in and the weather isn't really cooperating with you it's easy to try and squeeze it in and take a chance on whether or not it's going to rain but believe me it is not worth it because if wet lines get wet you have a big problem on your hands so the word of the day on this one is going to be wet if you made it this far in the video comment down below wet and i'll hashtag your real one my name is justin this is forever self-employed and until next time hustle hard and get that money baby peace